Welcome back to chapter 10. This is the fifth example in the chapter, and this is one that has us thinking about rotational ideas in the same problem as regular chapter four kind of force ideas. So what I mean by that is we have an object that is just rotating and not moving, and we have an object that is just moving up and down, a regular acceleration, and it is not rotating. These are still two objects tied together, and just like we saw in chapter four and five, we have to treat the two objects separately, but ensure that they are connected by not just the rope here, the tension will be the same on either end of the rope, but also by the fact that the acceleration will functionally be the same. So we'll see how that plays out in this particular example. It's probably one of the more important examples that we see that is really applying our chapter 10 ideas in a new problem format that we haven't really seen in this particular way before. All right, so we have a um, disk that we are going to investigate. And for this disk, it is rotating. It is rotating because there is a tension force pulling on it, a certain distance r away from that disk. So we have, for this disk, we can say that the torque is the tension force times the radius. I'm just going to use the capital R, radius of the disk, which we are told is 12 centimeters, which is 0 0.12 meters. So this torque is the tension times the 0.12 meters. And separately, we can say that the moment of inertia of this disk is one half times that big mass, the mass of the disk. So the mass of the disk we're told is eight kilograms times the large radius of the disk squared. So the moment of inertia here is one half times eight times 0 0.12, and that last part is squared, 0 0.0576 kilograms meters squared. Now we launched into all of this without really having a goal in mind, but one of the reasons for that is if we know that we're able to calculate something, it's probably useful to calculate it just to make sure that we understand how that process works. We are going to be using this, though, because for the disk specifically, we have that the torque is equal to I alpha, just like our previous two examples. So plugging in what we have so far, this torque on the left is our unknown tension times 0 0.12. And the moment of inertia on the right side is 0. 0576, and that's times our unknown alpha. Just to clean this up a bit, I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.12. And we get that the tension on the left is equal to 0 0.48 on the right times the angular acceleration on the right. All right, so right now we have an equation with two unknowns, so we'll set it off to the side. But otherwise, what this had been like up until this point should have looked very similar to example 10C and example 10D. Now, for this box that's attached, we have an object that has forces on it that's accelerating. We should draw a free body diagram. That free body diagram looks like tension up and gravity down, mass times little g, 1 times 9.8, which is 9.8 newtons. And we have the acceleration. We can draw it in here. And that's going to help us recognize that when we write down F net equals mass times acceleration, we need the gravity piece to be positive in the direction of acceleration minus the tension piece to be negative because it's opposite the direction of acceleration. All right, plugging in what we have, 9.8 minus the unknown tension, 
Mass here is one kilogram, so one times A is just A. So we have two equations that each separately have two unknowns. However, they are not quite the same two unknowns. Otherwise, this would look or should look very similar to a chapter four um, two object problem. What we do have though, and this is important, it's from the early parts of the chapter, is that R alpha is equal to A. At the point here of the disk at the edge, this tangential acceleration is equal to the radius of the disk, so capital R in this particular case, times the angular acceleration of that disk. So what we can do is we can plug that in. We can also plug in for tension. And so I'm going to switch to um, purple so that we can see the new equation with stuff being plugged in together. So the 9.8 was here already. Minus, instead of tension, I'm going to write 0 0.48 alpha. And on the right side, instead of acceleration, I'm going to write 0 0.12 alpha. So that used all three of these pieces. Let me go ahead and put a box around this so that we recognize that it was used here. This purple equation down here near the bottom used all three of these pieces together. This was the primary one that we were then substituting stuff back into. We can add 0.48 alpha to both sides. So we get 9.8 equals 0 0.60 alpha. We can divide by 0 0.60. I know it's way near the bottom, but we're almost finished. So the alpha value here is 16.3 radians per second squared. So that is a final, final answer, one of the two things we're being asked to solve. And then, and I'm going to go straight up from here simply because there's more space here than anywhere else. If we plug in 0.12, the radius, times the 16.3, the alpha that we just got, that will be our acceleration, and that's going to give us 1.96 meters per second squared for our acceleration of the block and of the disk. It should make sense to us that this is a smaller acceleration than gravity. This block is falling a lot slower than it would have if we just cut the rope, so we definitely expected an acceleration to be smaller than 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's really the only um, step six check that we really need to do here. So for this example, one thing I want to highlight um, before we really end here is if I draw a dashed line kind of through the middle here. On the left side of this dashed blue line, all of this was fully chapter 10 ideas that should look very similar to the pieces and equations that we were using in the previous two examples. The black part here on the right side of my dashed line, that should look like a very straightforward part of a chapter four problem involving two objects. And then we just put them together. That's when I switched to fancy colors, purple and then red. We put these two equations together in the same kind of way we did back in chapter four and five. It's just that we also needed to make sure that we understood that angular acceleration and regular acceleration are um, comparable to each other using this tool here. That's it for this example. There are more of this type of example in the extra practice set, and we can always go through things like this in office hours. Otherwise, I will see you in the next three examples for chapter 10.